the people's platform good evening and welcome to the show the creation of coherent and durable political institutions is one of the biggest challenge in present day governance what is then the role of political parties in driving the country's development goals let's find out by speaking to my guest tonight uh, my, mr manjula gajanaika civil society activist and election observer Lovely to have you here once again. Thanks for having me in this program. Absolutely. Um, Manjula, when we take the evolution of political parties in Sri Lanka, uh, how has Sri Lanka fared given the fact that right now we have 86 registered political parties yes. and Sri Lanka has declared bankruptcy. So yeah. can you help us understand? Yeah, ironically, actually, that the thanks thanks for selecting this topic. It is uh, currently uh, so important. I mean that the political party has a bigger role to play in the in this in the development agenda of the country. Anyway, actually, when when it comes to political parties, our very first political party is Sam Samaj mm -hmm. uh, in the, the creation in uh, uh, mid of uh, 1930s. After that, actually, we had the Communist Party. In 19, when when nine, when we are faced when we were faced in very first election in 1947, there were four political parties: Samasamaja Party, Communist Party, Le, uh, Bolshevik Lenin, Leninist Party, and United National Party. There were four political parties, as you correctly mentioned. Now we have 86 political parties, but as an election observer, when I mean when considering the role. And the task of uh, political parties led me to say, in simple manner, actually, political most of political parties are serving. I mean, working as a private entities, private companies in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. There was a famous uh, uh, judgment in two thousand and six. Actually, when uh, Mr. Kehliya Rambukwell and other six members crossed over to support uh, uh, Mr. Mahinder Rajapaksha at that time. There was an argument whether, uh, whether it is, it is, it is uh, ethically, ethical uh, cross over political parties by uh, members. Mm. But at that time actually that, that argument is still valid. However, after that actually, when, when we are looking back, what I can say actually that 10 or 20 years ago, People, people were listening to political parties. Actually, political parties were working. F in f were, were actually they were going front of pe front of the people. Actually, always. Mm. But now, no one listening to political parties. That is the truth. Then, actually, the historical fact is that they have accomplished and they have ended their role. Okay. Now, you can't. In a, I mean, you can't expect many more things from political parties at the moment the one of biggest challenge at the moment is actually according to my knowledge it is the executive presidency okay uh, due to the almighty powers of executive president the executive president has always i mean i mean the underestimate the powers and the task of political parties now we are facing that challenge right now Hmm. as a country so the public trust doctrine says that the uh, those who are govern governing hold the power in trust on behalf of the people the social contract theory says something similar however um, what we see is that political parties most of the time uh, they have their uh, part uh, election manifestos um, which say one thing but in practice uh, they completely defy what is said and there is no mechanism to hold them accountable for their breaches yes i have seen political party manifestos since 2000 dozens of political party election manifestos mm -hmm. actually they are so colorful they are they are nice they they are nicely printed actually they are uh, i mean i mean the what the included in political election manifestos is more than good i mean what uh, mrs sibyl vetta singh printed as uh, fairy tales mm -hmm. okay the thing is can i give a very i mean prime example to you 
Mr. Gotabi Rajapaksha once, I mean, the translator that converted the country in overnight, in one night, to use the organic fertilizer, okay, from using, uh, they avoiding that using uh, chemicals, okay, that the uh, fertilizer. Then, if you are reading the political election manifesto of Sri Lanka, Podujana Perimuna, what they say is actually, it should be a pilot project. I mean, gradually Sri Lanka will convert into organic fertilizer gradually, not in overnight. Mm. But they they turned and after that what has happened actually people chased away our uh, seventh executive president. Right. At that moment have you seen anything that particular political party raised their concerns on that issue? No. I can give you many of hundreds of thousands of examples that what included in the political election manifestos but the what executive president or political party leaders have done many things contrary to what they have raised i mean what what they have uh, included in their election manifesto therefore actually people that what you the what, what you mentioned that the public trust doctrine now i don't think sri lankan people are trust they have a trust on political parties further that is the main thing. If you need to regain the trust of general public, you need to do a good election manifesto, but action. I mean practical election manifestos. But considering the fact that I don't think that they will do it, there's a one example that why you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Sonali, it is always, I mean, creation of, preparation of election manifestos is a task of an inner circle who close to the political party leader. Hmm. Actually, I have met uh, many parliamentarians, members of political parties. I have asked a particular question from them. Have you seen the draft of election manifestos? manifestos? Have you contributed to that? The uh, simple answer is no, because each and, each and every political party has an inner circle. Okay, they are, they are gathering in one place, and making something, you believe me, most of things, I bravely, I would like to uh, mention bravely actually, I think even, even Mahinda Chintane, I don't think Mr. Mahinda Rajapaksha have seen the Mahinda Chintane, okay? It is just like a palette. Many people are including many things, but leader is only the spokesperson of political parties. That's why, the, that is why imagine the controversy actually their action and what included in the election manifestos are totally against. That is the main thing. Then we need a leader, political party leader, who can, who can, who can implement 100% political party manifestos. But unfortunately, we can't see such things happening in right now. So if we are to look at uh, reforming um, the political culture in Sri Lanka, Manjula, don't you think, uh, and this is a question that I'm posing to you, uh, don't you think that one of the simple ways of doing this would be to attach more, um, more structure to the election manifesto, more importance to the election manifesto, so that political parties themselves will attach a lot of importance to ensuring that they will only put on paper what they can achieve. And in the event they don't achieve it or they defy what's written there, people can hold them accountable. Sure, it is. It, it, I'm totally agree what you mentioned actually. It is, it, we can do it. But the problem is, you know that the almost, I mean, most of political parties, almost all the political parties are preparing their election manifestos closer to the election okay then they are answering just answering only short-term objectives mm -hmm. not long-term objectives right. okay they are seeing the next election it is the it is the it is the way of looking things by politicians not di not not diplomat not statesmen no that yeah. is the way that is the problem actually if there are some election manifestos actually there should be uh, short-term mid-term and long-term objectives not only that there should be a monitoring evaluation system mm -hmm. have you seen a, have you an, seen anything in related to monitoring and evaluation part of election manifestos mm -hmm. other thing 
other thing is that actually that you know that the ironically when when you are in power that particular particular political party you can see some of government officers higher public officers also align with that particular political party and they are taking portfolio in that specific ruling party okay what what that means that means actually public officers also wait in and wait in till they are favorite political party in power that's the main problem but as a pol as a public officer you can't do it actually whatever the ruling party whatever the government actually you have to support but unfortunately sri lanka has a bad political culture that most of public servants are looking forward to gain the power through political parties actually that is the that is the one of problem that what i mentioned that the evaluation and monitoring part if there is election monitoring election manifesto actually there should be a particular monitoring and evaluation part that should be implemented by particular public servants but unfortunately since 1970s okay the public servants are obedient servants of particular ministers as well as uh executive president so public servants are not government servants this is a true distinction that we need yeah. to make and we need to realize ourselves yeah that's the problem actually you know that uh, currently we do have uh, more than 1.6 million public servants out of 1.6 million maybe over 80000 people are included into uh, included into the level of uh, uh, staff officers and ex executive officers but unfortunately in sri lankan culture according to the our constitution even and legal system they are obedient to the political authority they don't have a, a autonomous power as before 1970s that is the another that is another problem in sri lanka then that's why actually people don't have any trust further uh, with political parties other thing is actually how they have they perform well in to show their accountability and uh, transparency one of prime example is that actually maybe you have surely seen that uh, political party annual statements annual reports submitted to the uh, election commission maybe yes as you correctly mentioned sri lanka we are in a bankrupted level but you may be surprised if you can read such annual political party reports okay you know they have wealth they have assets they have liabilities okay then that's why i mentioned earlier actually most of time they are working as public private entities because they are the inner circle almost all office bearers are appointed by executive uh, party political party leader or political party secretary those all those are working as a inner circle actually then there is no bottom up uh, practice in political parties there is no internal democracy that is the main thing then when it comes to the pres presidential election okay in us you know you have experience actually there is a there is a deadly campaign to take the con take the ticket to contest the presidency in america but in sri lanka when there is a election political party already announced this this xoy uh, will contest for the election can you do like that there should be a internal democracy in political parties but here the unfortunately the most important thing is that general public constituencies they are obediently i mean they are accepting what political party is saying then there should be a culture to question political parties but we don't have that how do we create that that cultural shift simple i mean we experienced a wonderful movement of young people it started from gold face okay now it's it it is just like shade in that that uh, spirit as well as the passion anyway you have to start it from youth maybe maybe uh, young people a level students as well as uh, university then it's simple thing is that actually that when political parties are coming to community they are they are investing money not they are actually they are using public money they are constructing something and put in a, put in a, that uh, placard no with uh, many numbers many names 
you may surprised sonali once i went to valigama urban council okay they have they have uh, constructed and open something like uh, uh, the part of a cemetery i saw there were 69 names including executive president that they are the people 69 68 people have opened that very simple uh, adjoining part of uh, to the cemetery in valigama okay 69 then is there any brave young person why they can't question that because our money why they such why they are uh, putting that much of uh, giant big placard using uh, 68 names then that is the point we should question then actually political party uh, will be i mean they will try to try to serve people otherwise uh, we can't create a culture like that all right we are in conversation uh, with uh, civil rights activist um, manjula gajanayaka we're going for a short commercial break we'll be right back People's platform. Gyps is live in concert with Sirisa TV. Where music meets the spirit of the season. Christmas with Gypsies. Back after 25 years to Bihar Mahadevi Open Air. Sirisa Flash Town 23 Gypsies live in concert. Featuring BNS Hana and Nadima. Get your tickets now. Media sponsors Sirisa TV and TV1. Taru pay in a discount. Enjoy up to 30% off on frames and sunglasses this Christmas with Vikramarachi Opticians. TV One, TV for life. Malvatu and Nasgiri Mahanayak Thero is still president to redeploy the military for security and development of Mihintale sacred grounds. Thai Myanmar cyber terror mafia enslaves Sri Lankan job seekers. Reports claim they are being used for cyber crimes. Former Health Secretary Chandra Gupta arrested. Protest opposite the SLPP office against a statement by Sagar Karyavasam. When others debated, India delivered Jay Shankar on helping Sri Lanka. Frontline socialists claim India's plan is not to help Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka China Inc tripartite agreement on water technology. TV1 TV for life. People's platform. Welcome back. We are in conversation with Manjula Gajanayaka, civil society activist and election observer. Uh, Manjula, we are talking about the role of political parties in driving uh, the country's development goals. Um, a key aspect that we need to talk about is coalition politics. It's a recurring aspect of regime formation in Sri Lankan politics. Um, oftentimes, we also see um, ethno-religious division. uh in in sri lankan politics uh, we see how politics is used as a tool to divide the masses speak to us about these very dangerous um concepts it is true i mean the, to minimize such dangerous actually that that da what danger what you mentioned actually there there are many tools if we are willing to use the one of prime example is the national list okay if i mean particular political parties can do address i mean rather i mean to to unite the country rather than divide what you mention here actually that use in the national list but unfortunately you we know that as constituencies actually i mean we always afraid that the thing is that 
always they are appointing for the appointing to the parliament through the national list either defeated uh, candidates or the person who are contributing who are supporting them lot that's the thing but if they have a real intention to develop the country to address such i mean such sensitive issues okay then they can appoint i mean they can select people and appoint through the national list but unfortunately the 99 constitu provision of the, our constitution always abused by political parties but other thing is that actually uh, i mean creating coalition is uh, not a strange thing in sri lanka i mean they have in samagi peramuna raj in 1970s after that uh, even 1980s i mean it is not strange but unfortunately almost all the coalition has created closer to election to win the election after that we can't see those members i mean they are everywhere that's the thing then i mean i mean it is human nature that mean you may be not be able to in a one place but an at least political party leaders should be able to guide them okay i mean regarding the national agenda national development agenda and also what i mean the i mean the taking the support of everyone mm -hmm. but the problem is in 1970 60s whatever happened i mean at that time actually we saw that those political party leaders were able to take the support of all the parties and also the develop the country in somewhat as an example you know in 1971 and 72 uh, late prime minister sirimao bandaranaike started to create the first uh, republican constitution for sri lanka who was the leader kolvinar da silva he represented opposition party at that time if we are translating into this time can you expect that our one uh, someone will appoint uh, opposition party member as the uh, as the leader of constitutional drafting committee i mean at that time actually we were starting to draft our first republican constitution keep aside the first constitution uh, preparing at least copa at least cop i mean uh, i mean ruling party is always reluctant to give the give the portfolio give the responsibility to responsibility to opposition parties no then if you really need to develop the country that is the thinking behind that that is the way they should do but unfortunately we don't have visionary leaders if there are a visionary leader actually we can expect uh, such a, such a, such a uh, join i mean such a uh, work done by uh, them but unfortunately we can't see right i'd also like your perspectives on um, this brand of ethnic politics yeah ethnic politics you know that the the composition in our our parliament that uh, it is wonderful to see you know that we had uh, i mean uh, haris patwa mantra electorate you know represented acs hamid and many more even earlier actually there were many person i mean yes they were they were represented many other uh, ethnic groups but actually they were able to secure their votes through even uh, almost all the ethnic groups even including singhala okay but at that time we saw that uh, most of political party leaders actually they were they were uh, i mean they were able to take the they take the support of almost all the uh, main ethnic groups as well as secure their voter base mm. now what has happened now main political parties you know that there was a very famous uh, saying in singhala uh, earlier that the mr mahindra rajpaksha introduced salon dora salon the roys open that mean anyone can come and go like that but unfortunately what has happened he absorbed he absorbed the political party members especially belong to minority parties at that time and actually the finally implemented the agenda of uh, majority politi majority ideas that 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 was what has happened earlier then even after the uh, after the demise of the late uh, mr ashrop actually we can't see uh, i mean emerging i mean emerging political party leaders 
to who will be able to guide all the political party leaders and also uh, visionary leaders like that. Actually, there's a vac lacuna in Sri Lankan uh, political culture. That's the main thing. Other thing is, you know, that the uh, you can't expect in almost all the time that almost all the political parties will align and will work for uh, the development of the country. It is the responsibility of political party leader. I mean that opposition party, let's say opposition party leader mean the next, maybe next leader of the country. And also the any of political party leader will be the next next step actually they will be the, who will they will be uh, govern the country no that is the that is the that is the situation but unfortunately we can't see that the they are representing the political desire genuine genuine ideas of uh, general public that's the main thing then you know that to re when revisit the political party history and the historical task of political parties what they should do actually they need to regain the trust of political uh, trust of uh, constituencies uh, uh, citizens of the country right so my final question to you is Manjula now th there are 225 um, MPs in Parliament there are 22 million citizens how do the citizens play a greater, more pronounced, more meaningful, more effective role in holding to account those they elect into office? Number one, I mean, I mean, as an attorney, actually, you also know that we do we do have enough laws in the country. We, I mean, as an election observer, I strongly believe that. To govern the country and also the secure, good, transparent, and uh, uh, accountable governance, actually, we don't need any new laws sure. if we are implementing the existing laws. Therefore, actually, we should do. We 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 will be able to uh, use the maximum use of current existing laws. One thing: RTI, a right to information application. Actually, that I have, I, I always go into the community, and when when I am when I am addressing such bigger gather, bigger big big gatherings, actually, maybe would be my first answer would be that how many how many right to information act have you filed? Okay, mm. answer is zero. Most of times they have not, they have even they have not seen the right to information uh, application. Oh. They are not referring the act as well as actually next next question actually second question would be have you seen political party manifesto mm -hmm. before voting the answer is no right. third question would be have you seen any annual party uh, political party annual accounts report mm -hmm. the answer is actually no then if you are not using existing laws and avenues actually how you are against oppose the malpractices of government uh, political parties that's the main thing then maybe the young or old actually we should be able to use maximum use those uh, what we have right now but unfortunately no the first thing uh, second thing is sonali actually we should train our youngest community youngest people to question others that almost all the time like in <laughs> the army and police actually we always listening to and obedient to orders it is good thing but in political arena actually you should be able to question others in maybe the maranadara samiti i mean the voluntary organizations level anything actually samiti or any rural level uh, activity actually if there are malpractices you should be able to question that is the starting point that is the starting point and then uh, you can do other uh, bigger things uh, after uh, using things fantastic thank you very much for really simplifying uh, and streamlining the conversation Manjula Gajanayaka as always a pleasure to have you here thank, thank you. you very much Thank you for watching us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.